Hey guys and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. In the last video, we looked at getting our player moving with a 2D top-down controller. In this episode, we're going to build on that and get our player cutting down trees and picking up items. And this can be transferred to any item, not just trees. So we're going to head into our Unity scene where you're going to see we've got an empty scene with just our main camera and player. Our player has box collider and rigid body, but also has the player movement script that I made in the last video. You could either use your own player movement script or one that you've followed from me. It's up to you, as long as it gets your player moving. So we're going to drag our tree sprite into the scene, or whatever sprite you're using, and just position that where you like. And to this I'm going to add a box collider 2D component, and adjust this to fit the tree. Once you're happy with your item that's in the scene, we're going to need to create a new item that's going to be what this drops when we mine it. So for me it's going to be wood, because it's a tree, and I'm just going to adjust this to look a little bit like a log. Once you're happy with how your item looks, we're going to turn this into a prefab by dragging it into the assets folder and delete it from our scene. And now to get started, we're going to want to open our player movement script on our player. If you've followed along my previous tutorial, then this will look similar, but if not, just make sure we have a vector2 that stores our player's position. Because we're going to create a new public vector2 and we're going to call this last pause. Then inside of our update function, we're going to create an if statement stating if input.getAxis raw and then horizontal doesn't equal zero, or input.getAxis raw vertical doesn't equal zero. Then we're going to set that last pause vector two that we'd created before equal to a new vector two, and then we're going to get our input.getAxis raw horizontal, and then we're going to get input.getAxis raw vertical. And this is going to store the way that our player was last facing, so that when we go to cut the trees, we can make sure our player is facing the tree that we want to cut. And then if we head back to our Unity scene, we're going to create an empty game object and call this Game Manager. We're going to add a Game Manager script to the component and open this up inside of Visual Studio. So to start, we're going to create a public static Game Manager instance. And then inside of a private awake function, we're going to set this instance equal to this, so that our Game Manager is it. And then we're going to create a public Game object and we're going to call this player. Heading back to our Unity scene, we're going to drag our player into the assigned slot in the Game Manager script. And then we're going to create a new empty c -sharp script called Tool. And we're not actually going to do very much with this in this tutorial, but we'll save it for future videos. So inside of this script, we're going to create a public virtual void called Hit. And we're just going to leave this empty for now, and that's all we're doing with this. And then we're going to head back to the scene, and on our player, we're going to create a new script called Tool Controller. Opening this up inside of Visual Studio, we're going to get rid of everything, and we're going to create a player movement reference to the player movement script we already have, and we're going to call this Player Mob. Obviously, if your character controller script's a different name, then use that instead. We're going to also create a reference to our rigid body 2D called RB. And then we're going to create a few serialized fields, starting with a float called offset distance, and I'm going to set this equal to 1. And then we're also going to create another one of a float called pickup zone. This is going to be how big you want the player to be able to reach to pick up. Now, inside of a private awake function, we're going to set this player mob variable equal to get component and then player movement script or whatever your script's called. And then we're going to set our RB equal to get component rigid body 2D. Now, inside of a private update function, we're going to create an if statement saying if input dot get mouse button down zero or whatever mouse button you'd like is used, then we're going to call a use tool function, which are a way to create. So inside of our private void use tool function, we're going to set a vector2 called pause equal to rb.position and then plus player move dot the player's last position and then multiply this by offset distance. Then we're going to create a collider 2D array called colliders and we're going to set this equal to physics 2 overlap circle all and then our pause and then pick up zone. Now we're going to type for each and then collider 2D C in colliders. And then inside of this, we're going to set our tool hit equal to c.get component and then tool, which is the script we made earlier. Now underneath this, we're going to create an if statement saying if hit doesn't equal null, then we're going to call hit.hit. .hit. And then we're going to break. Back in our Unity scene, if we open our tree component, we're going to add a new script to this called tree cut and open this up inside of Visual Studio. Now inside of this script, it's important that we change mono behavior to the tool script that we made earlier. And then we're going to create a few serialized fields. So the first one is going to be a game object and we're going to call this drop. And this is going to be our loop that we want it to drop. And then we're going to create another one called int drop count and set this to however many items you want to be dropped when we mine our object. We're also going to create one called float spread and this is going to be how spread out they are. Two is a good number to start with. We're going to create a public override void and we're going to call this hit. 
Now inside of this we're going to create a while and while drop count is greater than zero we're going to set drop count minus equal to one and then set a vector three pause equal to transform.position. Now we're going to create pause.x equal to the, our spread multiplied by unity engine dot random value minus spread divided by two and then we're going to do the exact same pause.y and copy and paste this into the next line. This is going to get random values in a certain area for our items to drop and then we're going to create a game object called geo and instantiate our drop at the position of pause. Now outside of our while loop we're going to destroy the game object and then back inside of our unity scene make sure we drag our wood prefab into the slot and then inside our wood prefab we're going to add a pickup item script to this and open this up inside of visual studio. Now inside of this we're going to create a transform called player and then we're going to create a serialized field and we're going to call this float speed. This is going to be for our speed of the item, so I want it to be slower than our player speed, so something like 4 will work. Then our serialized field float called pickup distance, and we're going to set this equal to something like 2.5, but you can change this around. And lastly, we're going to create a serialized field called float and then despawn time, which I'm going to set to 10 seconds, but you can set to whatever, just so we don't have lots of items in our scene. Inside of a private awake function, we're going to set our player equal to that game manager dot instance dot player dot transform that we created earlier in our game manager script. And then inside of a private update function, we're going to set that despawn time minus equal to time dot delta time so that our item despawns after the time limit. And then we're going to check that if the despawn time is less than zero, then we want to destroy the loop game object. Now to get our object moving towards the player when they pick it up, we're going to create a float called distance and we're going to set this equal to vector3.distance and then transform.position player.position. Now underneath this we're going to create an if statement stating if our distance is greater than the pickup distance that we've set, then we want just to return. Now to get moving towards our player, we're going to set a transform.position equal to vector3 and we're actually going to type move towards which I add in after this and then we're going to type transform.position and then player.position and then speed multiplied by time.delta time. Underneath this we're going to create an if statement checking that if our distance is less than equal to something like 0 0.1 then we want to destroy our object because the player has picked it up. Don't forget to go back up to this vector 3 and change it to move towards to make sure that the object starts to move towards our player. We're going to head back into the unity scene you can now see that if we're facing our object and we hit it, we're able to pick up all the loot. And that's it for this video, guys. Big thank you to my patrons for their continued support. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.